Some of the most important parts of any launch vehicle are its engines. Both its efficiency and power, among other factors, can have a massive influence on a rocket's payload capacity, production time, and even reuse properties. For a while now, we've been receiving the occasional update on the next generation of Raptor engines powering Starship. Musk shared some significant information on both upcoming production and the removal of heat shields and fire suppression in Super Heavy thanks to engine upgrades. Here I'll go more in depth into why Raptor 3 is such a big deal, some of the various improvements, the engine's timeline, and more. Over time, the Raptor engines have progressed from what was described by Musk as a Christmas tree of plumbing and components to both a cleaner and more capable Raptor V2. Despite the success of this engine so far, SpaceX is not done upgrading it yet. Elon replied to a tweet talking about the impressive number of Raptor engines currently in production and being built. Here, he was quoted saying, We could build a lot more, but the next version of Raptor is really the one to scale up production. We begin testing it in McGregor within a week or so. Regenerative cooling and secondary fuel paths have been made integral to the whole engine, thus no heat shield is required. Nothing quite like this has ever been done before. Taking away the engine heat shields also removes the need for 10 plus tons of fire suppression behind the engine heat shield, as any gas leaks simply enter the already superheated plasma surrounding the engines, rendering the leaks irrelevant. Raptor 3 also has higher thrust and ISP, he said. There's quite a lot to unpack in just this one statement. For one, he mentioned that testing of the new engine is set to officially begin within the next week or so. Here, we can expect some consistent firings at McGregor as they start putting these engines to the test. It's worth noting that around this time last year, SpaceX was conducting some of the first Raptor V3 fires ever. For example, in May 2023, Musk tweeted saying, Raptor V3 just achieved 350 bar chamber pressure or 269 tons of thrust. Congrats to the SpaceX propulsion team. Starship's Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so total thrust of 8,877 tons or 19.5 million pounds. This also included a graph of the chamber pressure relative to the time. While this test did occur around a year ago, it had very different goals from upcoming testing, not to mention it was basically an experimental Raptor V3. For example, at the time Musk mentioned, Yeah, to be frank, we did not expect the engine to survive a full duration run at that pressure. It is uncharted territory, he said. Now, after a year of time, they have a much more developed engine and are preparing to mass produce it. This also brings up his comment about being able to build a lot more, but waiting for Raptor 3 to be ready. In other words, they're hesitant to significantly increase Raptor 2 production when they know a much better engine variant is right around the corner. The plan would then be to start pumping out Raptor 3s at a rapid and consistent pace. Focusing back on this morning's comment, he also talked about the removal of the heat shield, which also removes the need for 10 plus tons of fire suppression behind the engine. Months ago, when it was originally mentioned that these engines wouldn't require a heat shield, some estimated that it would help remove at least a ton or two of mass. This 10 plus figure from Musk helps put into perspective the importance of these upgrades. Currently, the combustion chamber and the bell nozzle are already regen cooled. With this new Raptor, they found a way to continue that pattern for practically the rest of the engine, keeping it cool and making an entire heat shield and fire suppression system not necessary. So far, all of the integrated flight tests that have occurred have used the Raptor 2 engine. From the first flight to the fourth, there has been consistent improvement both with engine performance and the vehicle itself. That being said, we still see the occasional engine issue such as an early shutdown around liftoff or during the booster's landing burn. More time and testing, along with a new upgraded engine, should help SpaceX solve any of those issues. It'll be interesting to see what Raptor V3 looks like on a full flight test. Fortunately, until then, we should expect to see testing begin in only the next few weeks, if not days, based on this morning's comments from Musk. Something to look forward to in the near future. Raptor V3 has some ambitious goals regarding power and propulsion. Looking more closely at a chart provided by SpaceX, you can see the difference between Raptor V1, 2, and 3. Raptor's thrust first went from 185 ton force to 230, and the next goal is 280. That power increase would help facilitate an even bigger Starship variant and increase payload capacity. In theory, Starship 3, which is quite a bit taller than Starship 2, would be able to place more than 200 metric tons into orbit in a fully reusable mode. The unique scenario SpaceX is in related to engine production also needs to be mentioned. Around one year ago, Musk was quoted saying, We even slowed down Raptor engine production because we've got more Raptors than we know what to do with. This helps put in perspective the amount of work going into this hardware. As for design, on Raptor V1, you can see a labyrinth of plumbing and parts surrounding the entire engine in a very complex design. Musk mentioned that V1 looks kind of like a Christmas tree spaghetti pile, while V2 is greatly simplified, while also increasing thrust at the same time. In this side-by-side -side comparison, it becomes very clear the major improvements made. This simplification not only improves the efficiency of the engine, but also helps SpaceX with the cost and time to produce Raptor V2. Elon even pointed out that V2 costs about half as much as V1, even though it's much more powerful. 
B3 manages to continue this pattern with an even simpler looking engine. By early 2016, SpaceX had constructed a new engine test stand at their McGregor test site in Central Texas for Raptor testing. In 2021, SpaceX announced that they would be building a second production facility for Raptor engines, this one in South Texas, near the existing rocket engine test facility. At the time, it was reported that SpaceX would break ground soon and that the facility would concentrate on the serial production of Raptor 2, while the California facility would produce Raptor vacuum and new slash experimental Raptor designs. In 2019, the cost of the engine was stated to be approaching $1 million. SpaceX planned to mass produce up to 500 Raptor engines per year, each costing less than $250,000. Moving on to late 2021, SpaceX said that scaling Raptor production to support the frequent Starship test program planned for 2022 was currently the biggest constraint on how many vehicles they could make, and that failing to achieve a flight rate of at least once every two weeks by late 2022 would open up the possibility of bankruptcy for SpaceX. The reason given at the time was that Starship's orbital launch capability is necessary to deliver the next generation Starlink satellites needed to operationalize the massive capital-intensive Starlink broadband internet constellation. They since have begun making quite a bit of progress. As for the vehicle itself, not only are these new Raptor engines crucial for the first stage of Starship, but also the upper stage. Right now, the Starship upper stage features three sea level and three vacuum-optimized Raptor engines. Raptor Vacuum, or RVAC, is a similar design to the Raptor engine, but features a larger exhaust section and a larger expansion nozzle to maximize the engine's efficiency in space. Specifically, Raptor Vacuum is a variant of the Raptor with an extended, region-cooled nozzle for higher specific impulse in the vacuum of space. In terms of design, the Raptor engine is powered by subcooled liquid methane and subcooled liquid oxygen in a full-flow stage combustion cycle. This is a departure from the simpler open-cycle gas generator system and lock kerosene propellants the current Merlin engines use. The Raptor engine is designed for the use of deep cryogenic propellants, fluids cooled to near their freezing points, rather than using the cryo propellants at their boiling points as it's more typical for cryogenic rocket engines. The use of subcooled propellants increases propellant density to allow more propellant mass to be stored within the vehicle's tanks. Engine performance is also increased with subcooled propellants. Specific impulse is increased, and the risk of cavitation at inputs to the turbo pumps is reduced due to the higher propellant fuel mass flow rate per unit of generated power all of which are important factors in this new engine's performance and future. If SpaceX can complete Raptor 3 testing with promising results, a ramp up in production could be right around the corner. Elon revealed some new information about the next generation of Raptor engines. Specifically, V3 is going to remove the need for a heat shield and with it, over 10 tons of fire suppression. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.